Good morning and welcome to our Lenten Bible study for this fourth week in Lent. I'm so glad you could join us. Today we'll be in the 15th chapter of Luke, the first three verses and then verses 11 to 32. Now Jesus is seeking to save those that need saving the most. He's, he's looking out for sinners and tax collectors. And the Pharisees and scribes who are watching Jesus' every move are thinking, how can he eat with these people? They, would, they wouldn't even think of going out with these people and, and trying to help them. And that's exactly the type of people Jesus is trying to help, the ones that need it the most. Later, Jesus continues teaching in parables. Today, he's going to be teaching a parable of the lost son. You might know this parable better as the prodigal son. Now, the great thing about this um, story is that you can learn so much from each of the three main characters in the story. As the story begins, the youngest son goes to his father and asks him for his inheritance. Um, he wants to uh, get all the money that's due him. He doesn't want to wait. It's, it's like telling his father, I hope you die. Uh, I want the money. Uh, imagine if, uh, if you could have three wishes, like, like Aladdin, and you rub the lamp and you get three wishes and you say, I want instant wealth. Well, that's what the son wanted, the youngest son. He wanted his father to give him his allowance, all the money that was ever going to be due him now. He also wanted to travel the world. He looked at the neighboring countryside and said, look, the, the grass is greener there. Uh, I've watched caravans. I've watched people traveling. That's where I need to be, not here under my father's thumb, having to work and uh, keep schedules and things. And the third thing he wanted, his third wish, was to be his own boss, to be able to do anything he wanted. So he told his father this is what he wanted, and his father, probably knowing this is the worst thing that could possibly happen, just wants to make his son happy and gives him his share of the inheritance. Now this is a very big deal. We know that the, the younger son has an older brother. In Jewish tradition, the older brother, by law, gets two-thirds of what the father owns. So the father, to make the son get what he wants, has to come up with one-third of the worth of all of his servants, his cattle, his home, everything that he has. He has to come up with that. And there's a very good chance that he didn't have that kind of money or coinage or whatever it was back in the day. To, to do this. He may have even had to borrow to make this happen. But he gave his son what he wanted, and his son spent no time in leaving and heading towards this country that he wanted to explore. Well, the younger foolish son went there and lived recklessly, spending money on women and wine and Anything he saw, whatever his heart desired, he spent the money on it. Imagine all the instant friends he made and helped him spend that money. Well, before long, the money was spent, and the young man is in a foreign country, and those friends he thought he had made started to disappear. The women no longer looked his way. So he had to get a job to support himself in a foreign country where he wasn't known. And to make matters worse, a famine was upon this country. Now, in biblical times, famines happened for many different reasons, sometimes without warning. Sometimes they were economic, sometimes it was because of the weather. But you can know this, that the people of that country were going to take care of their own and not this foreigner who came into their town spending recklessly. He had to find someone to give him a job, and the only one that was offering was for him to become a swineherd, a feeder and keeper of the pigs. For this Jewish man, the, his fall has, has now complete. Um, no self-respecting Jewish man would ever work 
with pigs. These are the unclean animals that he was told about in his youth to avoid. And now it was the only job that he could get. Being hungry and needing things and no one helping him because no one had any reason to help him. He was the outsider. He started looking at the food that the pigs were eating, thinking, I have to eat this. What the Bible tells us that he finally came to his senses and he thought of his home. More specifically, he thought of the servants that worked for his father and how they had a roof over their head and plenty to eat. And he thought to himself, I will go back to my father. Uh, I will give up my sonship. Uh, I, I will become a servant for him. I have I have uh, disgraced God. I have insulted my father. And if he takes me back, I'll work. I'll work. At least I'll be able to eat and live like, like a human being. He even comes up with uh, a speech that he's going to give his father, you know, you know, telling him how, what a bad mistake he made. Um, but he's feeling humility, and the son is coming home. Our next person in the story is the father. Now the father knew when his son asked for this request, it probably broke his heart to uh, have to uh, either give his son his inheritance before he passed away. It was like an insult to the father. It was like, how can you leave your, how could you leave your family, your, uh, your friends, your home, uh, your father, and, and, and go out and do these things? But he wanted to make his son happy, so he obliged. Even though, can you imagine giving that one-third away, what it did to the household, and it pr practically crippled them? Well, we're told that while the son was still a far way off, the father saw him across the field and ran to him. I can picture this father every day going about his morning chores, just looking over the horizon in hopes that his lost son might someday appear. And this was the day. And his father didn't hesitate. He girded himself up and he ran full speed to his son. Now, this is something that's unheard of in biblical time. It, was, it wasn't respectful for, for a father, the leader of a home, to run, to do anything. He had workers paid to do things like that. Okay, but he didn't even hesitate. He ran to his son, and when he met his son, he embraced him and kissed him. And immediately, the father started to restore his son. He called his servants, quickly, come, get the best robe we have and put it on him. Go get him a ring of honor for his, for his finger and, and put shoes on his feet. Then he went to other servants and said, go, get the fatted calf and prepare it for we are going to have a feast tonight and everyone will take part. Invite everyone that's around. Well, there was a good reason for this. If anyone were ever to have the fatted calf, remember, there's no refrigeration in Bible day. They have to eat all that meat and it's a lot of meat, okay? And the father doesn't want to hold anything back. His son has been found. His lost son has come home, and he wants to celebrate it, and everyone's invited, and he's not sparing anything. Then we come to the third character, the unforgiving son. When he hears all the commotion around the house, the son who had stayed behind faithfully serving the father, the one who by Jewish law was due to thirds of the father's wealth said, what's, what's happening? Well, your son, he, uh, your brother has returned and your father's killing the fatted calf. Well, he decided he wasn't even going to attend this thing. And his father came out to him, yo, you, you, your brother's home. And, 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 he, and he said, father, I, I've been here all these years. I've worked and I've done everything. And you haven't once offered me uh, uh, even, a, even a goat to share with my friends. And he was, he was, he was jealous. He was angry. It was, uh, what about me? What about me? And his father tried to tell him that 
son, everything I have is all yours. It has always been yours. But your brother was lost, and now he's found. But he couldn't see it. The older brother couldn't see for the anger and envy that he had. But this isn't a, this isn't a rare story in the Bible. Remember Cain and Abel. Remember the story of Jacob and Esau. And how about Joseph and his jealous brothers? Yes, jealousy amongst brothers, uh, uh, getting special treatment or things like that have been throughout the Bible, and a lot of them didn't end well. Um, but the father here, the father, the way he's acting, he reminds us of our heavenly father who is constantly chasing after us when we go astray, when we chase the things of life that are so important to us. Can't you see us making the same choices? I want to win the lottery. I want to travel the world. I want to be my own boss. I don't want to, I don't want to work for somebody anymore. These choices have been since the beginning of time. Now that we're in Lent, we can think about these choices and think about the importance of family and the importance of forgiving. We live in a society today where grace is not embraced, but uh, revenge. You know, how can I get back at someone who did me wrong? Uh, our Father is a Father of grace. Grace, grace, wonderful grace. Grace from God above. Grace, grace, beautiful grace given with God's love. Have a blessed week. Thank you.